Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about writing classes in Python, and we're specifically going to be talking about how to make them comparable, since classes by default aren't comparable. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll show you a little recipe for getting that done. Fortunately, it's really easy. Um, but let me show you first off that classes aren't comparable. So if we just make a class, for instance, and try and compare two instances of them you'll see that we get a type error that less than is not supported between instances of C and C. And uh, we'll also get the same for greater than and for greater than or equal to and you know all the other rich comparison operators. Uh, we will not get errors for does not equal and equal equal uh, because these are defined to always return a value, but we will also need to handle these as well when we uh, implement our special class here. Uh, but yeah, let's let's jump into that. So Python file plus C. I'm gonna make the class contain just a value. It, you know, this is a silly example. You would probably have an actual use case for this in the real world, um, but I'm gonna show you how to do this for a silly case. Uh, Self.x equals x, and we're gonna make a wrapper just so it's gonna be easier for us to understand what's going on. Type self name self x bang r. Now we should have we should have a wrapper. Cool. Okay. So I talked about a few of the operators that we had before. So we can actually implement those by implementing double under special methods. So lt is the one for less than. And this should always return a bool, and the other should be object. Now you may be tempted to use C here, uh, and I actually did a video specifically about why you don't want to do this because you want to be able to compare against every other object possible, and potentially, you know, if if the object is something you don't know about, return uh, not implemented instead of not implemented error. And I will link that in the description. Um, but you want to you want to use object as the type for this here, and so. You basically say if is if not is instance other uh, C. So if we don't know how to compare against ourselves, we will return not implemented. And note that this is not implemented and not not implemented error. Not implemented error is an exception, and that's what that other video goes about, goes for about. Um, otherwise, we want to return whether we're less than the other, and we'll just use our contained value to be our comparison here. You could have some other comparison criteria for whatever class, class you're using, but we're just going to use our uh, our data member x here. So we're just going to do return self.x is less than other.x. And now once we've implemented this, we can use the less than operator, which is great. Uh, but we still have problems if we try and, oh, actually greater than works fine as well. Uh, but we do have problems if we start using operators that are not greater than. So actually, I, I believe what happened here is this got flipped and then reran the uh, reran less than. Actually, let's just put a print in here to show what is going on here. Lt ran. Uh, we can even put l less than other. Maybe we can see what's going on here. If we do C less than C2, okay, cool. So that's that's what we expect there. Uh, but when I did greater than, oh, it did also run. It flipped it around and ran less than. So uh, part of the Python runtime is at least smart enough to flip greater than to less than, uh, but we still have problems with greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. Uh, those ones are not implemented properly. And you can see that they're they're not even you know trying to use our less than operator. Uh, but fortunately, there is this thing in func tools that makes it so we don't have to, uh, oops, not functions, func tools, that makes it so we don't have to implement all the other functions for each of the uh, uh, double underscore comparison operator names there. Uh, and that is called total ordering. And what that will do is it will define all of the rest of these operator, um, yeah, operators for you if you only define at least one of them. Uh, you also have to define double under equals, and this is a little bit weird to me. Uh, in C++, you don't need to do this uh, because you can, you know, if you have x, uh, uh, let's say x equals y equals 6, just assuming a value, and we will only use less than to see whether these are equal to each other. You can use not x less than y and not y less than x. Uh, to simulate equality, 
Of course, this is a little bit a little bit contrived here, uh, but I'm surprised that Python doesn't do this. And and my guess as to why they don't do that is because object itself implements a double equal, and so um, it would need to make sure this exists. But I think it could just check whether it exists. So I don't really know. I feel like total ordering could be slightly better and implement your own equal for you. And in fact, we'll <laughs> we can we can implement our own equal here as well. I guess self other object to bool and again we'll do if not is instance other c turn oh in this case i believe we return false instead of not implemented not sure uh i should double check <laughs> what do they use in their example they use not implemented okay cool uh and then otherwise return self.x equals other.x and we could actually do return not self less than other and not other less than self. We we could uh, we could do our little cheatsy thing here, which I think uh, total ordering could do for us, but it doesn't. Uh, but if we import func tools and do func tools dot total ordering, of course I should probably just put the actual code here. Return self dot x equals other dot x. Um, this can be, you know, a, a cheatsy way to save yourself some time, I guess. <laughs> okay, but if we put functools.total ordering on this now, and we run this again, we now have all those other operators implemented for us. Uh, actually, let's print print ecran. Okay, we can see all of the things happening. C1 less than or equal to C2. Uh, you can see that it ran less than, so it, and that was true, so it said that that was correct. If we do two, it actually runs, oh, it runs more operators because we did this. <laughs> Sorry, I made this more confusing than it needs to be. C2 less than or equal to C2. So you can see it ran less than, and that was false, so then it ran equal to uh, to implement less than or equal to for us. And the same happens if we do greater than or equal to. You'll see that it actually, uh, well, we can't actually see that it flipped it around here. Uh, wait, why did it only run less than? Oh, less than was false, so you know that it's greater than or equal to. Yes, that makes sense. Cool. So it only had to invert one of the operators. Uh, so it implemented greater than or equal to as not uh, a less than uh, b. Oops. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Hi, Zach. Thank you for the follow. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is functools.total ordering, and uh, <laughs> I'm so glad this exists because writing out all of these operators by hand is super tedious. But you could do it. You could write the other three functions that would look basically like this but have similar operations here. Um, but anyway, hopefully this was useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.